Good morning, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. And the reason why I say good morning, Holy Spirit, because in your neck of the woods, it may be good morning, good evening, or good night. Let's pray. Father God, we give all all the honor, all the glory, all the praise unto you. And we thank you for being with you once again. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, I thank you for giving us another word today, today, today. And I thank you for being in the land of the living. And oh God, I just thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for the precious Holy Spirit. I thank you for your spiritual sons and daughters upon this earth that's doing a mighty and powerful work upon this earth, oh God. I thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that comes upon us shall be condemned because it's the inheritance of the saints in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah and hallelujah and hallelujah. The name of this ministry is Speak the Word Only. The name of this ministry is Speak the Word Only. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and hallelujah. I thank the Lord Jesus that he gave us that name years ago. My name is Prophet R.D. Stinson. R.D. Stinson. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Father God, we are continuously praying for Israel and Hamas. We praying for Russia and Ukraine, China, and Japan, and for all the countries all over the world that are standing in the need of prayer and for provision. We're praying for the children and the widows and the orphans and the homeless. And oh God, for the ones that, that do not know you, we're praying for them. And Lord God, I'm standing in the gap for my family all over the world that you may touch them and give them whatever they are standing in the need of prayer for. I give you the glory, O oh God, all the praise and all the honor. I thank you, Lord God, for giving me the opportunity to be part of your ministry, not my ministry, but your ministry and that you called me into your ministry years ago when I didn't know what I was doing I didn't want to do it I was foolish but I thank you for your grace and your mercy. 
Lord God, now, now, family, I'm talking to the body of Christ, I pray that you pray for me and pray with me. That's not just a slogan. I'm truly asking you to pray for me and pray with me that I may hear what the master has to say. We don't need to know what I have to say because what I have to say don't mean anything. But what the master helps to say mean all things. It is the Holy Spirit that draw men unto repentance. It's the Holy Spirit that brings good things. It's the Father of lights that brings down all good things from above. That's who it is about. It's not about Prophet R.D. Stinson. It's not about any minister. It's not about no one. But it's about God Almighty, the creator of heavens and the earth. It's about him. All have sinned. I say all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God doesn't want you to continue sinning. That's a uh, practicing of doing things that you shouldn't be doing. Now, I know they teach you to continue to sin, sin, sin. First John, second John, third John, fourth John, fifth John. Back in the book, back there with Revelation at, in the back. It doesn't teach you that. See, I don't care what man tell you. I only care what the scripture teaches you. And don't read the scriptures. We call them golden nuggets. I ain't know I was going this way. We call them golden nuggets. Slowly and meditate upon them. And how does faith come, children? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Because if faith come by her, I've been going home to be with the Lord a long time ago. Because I've been in this thing a long time. That's not how faith come. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the, the word of God. And God will bring you more revelation on something you have read years ago. Am I right about it? I hope you hearing me. You are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. God will give you a new body. Am I right about it? You are a spirit. You have a soul, part of your thinking capacity. You can feel, you can, you can smell your senses. That's part of your soul. 
and your soul and your spirit is not the same. I told you that once before. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it mixed up. Rightly divide the word of truth. The word of God is not a King James Bible or Nairobi Bible or European Bible. It's the word of God. It is scripture. They wasn't written by chapters. They was written in scrolls. And people say, well, don't you think they could tamper with it and change it up and stuff? Do you think God is that foolish? God is smarter than you and me too. You think God is dumb, dumb like a man. <laughs> you got to be out of your living mind to even think. And I listen to some men that think they are smarter than God, the creator. Just like some people think they're smarter than their mother and father. That's another thing for another day. Yeah, you heard me right. But anyway, I want to give honor to my spiritual father, Bishop, Apostle, Michael Wagura, in Nairobi, Kenya, First Love Pentecostal Church. I want to give a shout out to Pastor Rose, all the ministers, all the pastors, all the missionaries, deacons, evangelists, and whatever title you may hold in Nairobi, Kenya, and in Kenya. We want to give a shout out to all of you there. I miss you. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Then, Sophie and I want to give a shout out and love to our family there in Nairobi, Kenya. And we want to give a special shout out and love to Margaret, baby's sister. We love you and tell our family there, God bless them and God speed. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. None. And the blessings of Abraham and all of God's blessings be bestowed upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Now, this is not necessarily in order. But I want to talk about something today that is on my dear heart. And then... I want to talk about some golden nuggets. And then also I want to talk about uh, in Genesis chapter 20th. We'll stop at verse 13. Abraham and Abimelech. Abraham and Abimelech. And then if it be a lesson. That's what it would be, a lesson or a title. That's what it would be. Abraham and Abimelech. In Genesis the chapter 20. And stop at the 17th verse. Now, when I say those golden nuggets, you know it's those golden nuggets. It's those golden nuggets. Psalm and meditating on those golden nuggets, Psalm 34, Psalm 64, Psalm 100, Psalm 1,000 times more. It's those golden nuggets that's going to build us up daily. I love them golden nuggets more than the lesson. Because it's those golden nuggets. 
That's what teach us. That's what motivate us. That's what we know what we believe and it builds us up. I'm praying for my family all over the world. Louise, I'm praying for you and your family right now. Barbara, I'm praying for your back pain. And some kind of gas it, uh, problem in 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 the lower region of your stomach, some type of cancer. We bind it in the name of Jesus, and we loosen healing and total miracle right now in Jesus' name. Larry, we praying for you a job. In the mighty name of Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. And if I did not call your name, receive whatever you stand in need of right now. This is not a game. This is the trueness of what I'm saying. This is not a regular Bible study. We believe in miracles, signs, and wonders. We believe in miracle signs and wonders and creative miracles daily. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, 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 be, without any further ado, let me go to the book. Lord, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost going all over my body and down my back. I, I, hallelujah, I know I feel the, the presence of the angels in this room, especially, hallelujah, wait a minute. Father God, protect Johnny right now. Protect him from dangers seen and unseen. And then protect my family right now from danger seen and unseen. No, no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Nothing shall happen unto them. No weapon formed against them. Anything that tried to come against them, I commanded right now to be ceased and dissolved. And the angels are there to protect them. In Jesus' name, I command it right now in the mighty name of Yahshua Hamasiah. I command it right now in the name of Jesus, Yahshua Hamasiah. Right now, this day, the 12th of these, the, the 9th of December, 2023. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm calling on you, Yahweh. Yalamba, kedide demba, shandugula, baganda gula. Alanda de denini, kalalamba badiando, kalalamba di dada. And all the way to Nairobi, Kenya. Protection, Lord God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And 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 do up the eight two buck two in Sha Town in Sha Town in Sha Town, yeah Lord in Sha Town. Protect somebody right now in Sha Town, Lord God. And then the windy city, windy city, windy city protection, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And then up on 47th Street, Lord God. You know what? I, yeah, I know what I'm saying. In 47th Street, Lord God. Protection, Lord God. And then, and then, and then on Martha Luther King Drive, Lord God. Protection in the name of Jesus. I call it done. I call it done. I call it done. 
Hallelujah. And wait a minute. Hidden Valley, North Charlotte, Tran Hill, Rosa Ferry Road area. Protection, Lord God. In Jesus, Mallard Creek. Protection, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, down south, trying, oh God. Protection, South Boulevard, Lord God. Speedily, angels of the Lord are encamped around the family all over Charlotte, North Carolina, and Nairobi, Kenya. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, as I speak. And no weapon formed against them shall prosper. I give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Glory be to God. Amen. Now, let's look at Acts chapter 16, 1 through 3. Watch this. Then he, Paul, came to Dabri. Listen now. This is what I want. This is what I'm talking about before I read it. We have seen that in the Old Testament, God accepts interracial marriage and in fact punished Marian when she spoke against Moses, Ethiopian wife. We have also seen that the New Testament revealed in the gene genealogy of Jesus Christ at least one and perhaps three ancestors of mixed marriage I mean parentages what does the New Testament have to say about interracial marriages let's look at Acts chapter 16 1 to 3 then he Paul came to debris and Lazarus, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was a Greek. Verse 2 He was well spoken of by the brethren who were at Lazarus and Iconian. Verse 3, Paul wanted to have him go on with him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region. For they all knew that his father was a Greek. Timothy was the offspring of an interracial marriage between his mother Eunice, a Jew, and his father whom the New Testament tells us was a Greek. Acts chapter 16 verse 1, Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. The Israelites and the Greeks were considered different races, yet the marriage of Timothy father and mother must have been acceptable to the Lord because Timothy was used mightily in the formation of the early church. Did you hear that? Again, the only prohibition I can find in the Bible about whom people should marry is not ethnic but spiritual did you hear that i'm repeating this and i will repeat it again because i want to establish for all times an intensible racial lies about the bible are so that no one will ever be taken in by it again. 
God only prohibits regarding marriage is the one I the one I quote from Second Corinthians chapter six verse fourteen. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbeliever. Did you hear that? That's it. Believers should not marry unbelievers. If a white believer marry a white unbeliever, they are unequally yoked. If a red believer marry a red unbeliever, they are unequally yoked. The same holds true for a black believer, yellow believer, and a brown believer. It's about believers and unbelievers. Color does not matter to God because out of one blood, God made all men. Did you hear that? Shout about it, somebody. You heard me. And you heard me right. Yep. Thank be to God. Now. Now, the next thing I'm going to is the lesson. In Genesis chapter 20, Abraham and Abimelech. Did you hear that? Abraham and Abimelech. And Abraham journeyed from thence towards the south country and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur and sojourned in Gerar. Now let me give you some commercials. Or should I? Yeah, I think I'll give you a little bit. I'll give you a little bit. The sin and mis misery that result years before from journeying towards the south country should have taught him never again to move in that direction. But man as such never learn, nor can learn spiritual lessons. We will find here that sin is just as hateful in a man of God as in a man of the world. And it guilt is greater. Abraham must have been deeply shocked at the power of unbelief in his nephew Lot. But was he equally shocked at the power of evil in himself at this chapter recorded? You know, when, 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 when God, when Abraham went out, you know his name was Abram at first, when he first went out, God told him he was going to uh, bless him and everything. When, God, when, when, when he went out and left his kindreds and everything, and when he went out, Lot went with him, his nephew. I'm just throwing this in for free. God didn't tell Lot to go with Abraham. But, you know, people can hang around you and stuff. They'll be blessed because of you. I just want to throw that in for free. You heard me right, what I just said. But anyway, verse 2. And Abraham said of uh, Sarah, his wife, She is my sister. 
the, 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 the title and the lesson is Abraham and Abimelech. Did you hear me? So verse 2 say, Abraham said, And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, She is my sister. Now look at him. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. So soon he told that, that, that Sarah was his sister. Now he was telling the ha half truth. He wasn't telling whole truth. But he was telling some truth. But some truth ain't the truth. You, did, did you hear what I said? So he took her. You, you hear what I'm saying? He took her because she was fine. Huh? You heard what I said. I'm coming straight from the hill. I ain't beating around the bush. Hmm? Now look at verse 3. But God came to Abimelech. You, I'm glad this verse right here is, is coming up. But I'm, I'm going to say this before I read this verse. You know, people be saying, Well, God ain't no faith, a fair God. Because what about them people that live in Africa and all these other people? If Jesus is the only way to, to the truth, how God going to tell these other people about salvation if they can't find out? Y'all sound ignorant. God got a way of letting people know. Y'all must think God on y'all. I'm going to use that elementary term that y'all be using. Level. But I ain't on no level. I'm, on di I'm in dimension. Look at verse 3. And don't read so fast. Watch verse 3. Meditate on the word of God, I said. But God came to Abimelech. How did he come to him? In a dream. When? By night. Why I say he got to come to some of y'all by night? Because y'all jamming too hard in the daytime. Oh, man, I got to come to your raw. You know why. I ain't got to name the reason why you ought to come to you by nighttime. You're jamming too much in the daytime because you're too busy doing all this other stuff. And I ain't got to name it. Don't get mad at the messenger. I'm just a paper boy. But I'm telling the truth, though. That's one thing I'm doing. So he came by night and said to him. So be saying... God don't talk to me. Yeah, he is. He's just talking too much. He talking. You ain't listening. But you listen at them other things you listening to. The club. Well, I said I wasn't going to start naming stuff. Let me move right along. There I go again. You know how, how I am. You know how I was when you first started listening. And said to him. Behold, you are but a dead man. For the woman which you have taken for, she is a man wife. Now he's telling it. Now let me throw some commercials in there for you can get some understanding. Even though I already know. If God had not intervened, Abraham sin would have been the disastrous. If it is to be noticed, Sarah is again referred to by the Holy Spirit as Abraham's wife. The sister thing was mentioned only by Abraham. And not by the Lord. While she was Abraham's half sister, still Abraham claimed to Abimelech was a half true. Therefore, look at by God as a lie. <laughs> you hear what I 
I say it. Half truth is a lie. According to God. If you ain't telling the whole truth, nothing but the truth, you heard that before in court, right? It was she was Abraham's half sister. Watch verse four. But Abimelech had not come near her, thank God. And he said, Lord, will you slay also a righteous nation? Watch some, watch some, uh, some commercial. The Philistine prince, already knowing the, of the destructions of Solomon and Gomorrah, feared that he and his people are in the same destruction unless the Lord is uh, uh, pacified quickly. That's why he's talking to the Lord. Uh, and look at verse 5 he said he not unto me she is my sister that's what he told me and she even she herself said he is my brother in the integrity of my heart and innocent of my hands have I done this in fact, the man was innocent. It was Abraham and Sarah who had done the wrong. The man was innocent. It was Abraham and his wife scheming that scheme. Huh? Say what? Look at verse 6. And God said unto him in a dream, Yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart. For I also will hail you from sinning against me. Therefore suffer I you not to touch her. Not to have sex with her. I know it. Look at verse 7. Now therefore restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet. Now the first prophet we ever known was Abraham. And they ain't say nothing about him being no miracles or nothing. But God called him a prophet. Just like Jesus called me. Did you hear that? Did you see that in the book? Did you see where he called him a prophet? God called him Abraham a prophet. Did you know that? But you never heard the preacher say that before, have you? He said everything, but he didn't tell you that. Anyway, moving right along, he's a prophet, and he shall pray for you. Listen to verse 7. I'm going to start from the beginning. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for you, and you shall live. And if you restore her not, know you that you shall surely die, you and all who are yours. Your whole household. Everything you got. Everything. Did you hear that? Verse 8, Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ear. And the men were so afraid. All Abimelech people was afraid. Verse 9, Then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What have you done unto us? And what have I offended you that you have brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? You have done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. 
Look at verse 10. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What did you see that caused you to do these things? Why you do these things to me, man? What's up with that? I ain't did nothing to you. That's what he's saying. Verse 11. And Abraham said, Because I thought, Surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will kill me for my wife's sake. She was fine, I told you. She was finer than wine, as we used to say. She looked good. You heard me. Verse 12. And yet, indeed, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she be became my wife. And you can go to verse uh, 2 and 3 and 7. Now, they say it stated Abraham dwelled on the fact that Sarah is indeed his half sister, while the Holy Spirit emphasized the fact of, of the lady being his wife. Abraham's statement about, about, about earthly stuff. The Holy Spirit is, is dwelling on she's your wife. You getting the drift? That's what the Holy Spirit is saying. She's your wife. You should have told him she's your wife. Because that's what she is. Mm -hmm. I hope y'all hear me. Verse 13. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father how that I said unto her, This is your kindness which you shall show unto me in every place where we shall come, said of me. He is my brother. 14. And did you hear that? That's what Abraham said. And 14, and Abimelech took sheep and ox and man servant and women servant and gave them unto Abraham and restored his and restored Sarah his wife. Now he done did all of that. And look at him. This is the commercial. Despise the wrongdoing on the part of Abraham, the Lord blessed the patriot. He does the same with us oftentimes. That man had to bless his socks out. He gave them all of that. He had told a lie. I ain't saying go tell no lie. Don't get that in you. But he told a lie. Telling that lie. Yeah, that's what he did. Mm -hmm. Now, 15. And Abimelech said, Behold, my, my land is before you. Dwell where it please you. Whatever. Abimelech had sense enough to realize that the blessings of God was upon Abraham. And consequently, he offered him a place in his land. He no doubt experienced great blessings from God because of the of this act and so will anyone else who bless god children i told you when people are around you the blessings fall on them they might not want to tell you but you already know your eyes open you know they being blessed huh they bless when they're around you when I went to Nairobi, Kenya, they were blessed because of me. That's why they wanted to start doing stuff. I mean, just do stuff. Even when I was here before I left, people want to start doing stuff. I remember when I first got my first thousand dollars, somebody did. I mean, people started just reaching
Mm-hmm. You think I'm just talking, but I ain't. And I know that's not good, ain't it? Sixteen, verse sixteen, and unto Sarah he said, "Behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver." Behold, he is to you a covering of the eyes unto all who are with you and with all others. Thus she was reproved. Now, by referring to Abraham as her brother, in effect, this heathen priest is telling her, don't do that again. It doesn't become you. In other words, don't do that again. Don't do what you did. Saying he your brother. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? A Bibelac in effect is saying if you openly claim Abraham as your husband, this to be sure will be protection enough for you and in fact for the entirety of your clan. It is sad when we as believers has to take reproof from the world. A divine principle, however, shine forth in this sad chapter. And that is that God, in his amazing grace, is not ashamed to be called the God of a poor, feeble, um, feeble, imperfect and stumbling man if there is despise all the weakness faith and love in the heart the patriot by his own faithfulness has deeply degraded himself so as to be justice reviewed by the heathen priest yet god in his faithfulness closed him with deity and honor him in the presence of Abimelech. He blessed him. And he was going to bless him anyway. He need, God didn't need Abraham to lie. Y'all think y'all helping God out sometime by doing some of the stuff y'all be doing. You know what I'm saying. Verse 17. So Abraham prayed unto God and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maid servant and they bore children. Why? Because Abraham was a prophet. That's why I read it in the scripture. You need to read your Bible all the time and rightly divide the word of truth. You heard me. Say what you will. Call me what you want to call me. But without you, I'll watch what I call you. And I'm talking about me. But anyhow, moving right along. Let's go to some golden nuggets, if you will. I'm taking you off of peanut butter and jelly and taking you higher higher in the Lord. I know you're getting something today. I ain't no say I hope you're getting something. I know you're getting something. Let's go to Proverbs, if you will. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 4. Proverbs 4 and 7. You've been there before, but faith come by how? Faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Say what? Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Did you hear that? And, because I'm not finished. And with all your getting, Get understanding. Did you hear that? 
Let me say it one more time. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. That's why God gave Solomon all of that wisdom. Am I right about it? And with all you're getting, get understanding. And that's why I be asking God, give me wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. You heard me. Let's go to the second golden nuggets. Ecclesiastes 11. I'm going to give you 11 and 1. I'm going to give you the commercials too. Okay, are you there? Some people think God is taking a long time or the blessing is taking a long time or this and that and a lot of yang yang. Keep your mouth closed and speak the word only. What did you say, prophet? I say, keep your mouth closed and only speak the word. Speak the word only. Ecclesiastes behind Proverbs. Chapter 11, verse 1. Cast your bread upon the waters. Speak it out of your mouth. If you give finance or you speak it out of your mouth. Cast your bread upon the waters. For you shall find it after many days. We have here the promise of the Lord. That. Every blessing promise will be fulfilled, even though some of the fulfillment may be after many days. We are not to lose faith. The guarantee has been given. Did you hear that? God is not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. If he said it, so shall it be. Did you hear that? It's a done deal, folks. That's what I say it. Okay, let's go to Exodus. I'm throwing something out there. Golden nuggets, if you will. Exodus 24. Exodus 24. Starting at the ninth one, ninth verse, and stop at the thirteenth. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nabat, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. Verse ten. And they saw the God of Israel. I know what St. John chapter uh, uh, chapter 1 verse 18 say no man have seen God at any time. This statement given by Moses does not contradict the statement that is given in John 1 18. That means come fully comprehend. You have to have a strong concordance. But anyway let me they saw the God of Abraham. You just got to know how to rightly divide the word of truth. And they saw the God of Israel, like I just said. And they were under his feet as it were a paved work of a sapphire stone. And as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. Verse 11. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink. So they was eating and drinking. And he laid his hands not upon them. Did you hear that? Verse 20. I mean, verse 12. I'm sorry. And the Lord said unto Moses, 
the Lord is speaking. Come up to me into the mount. I want you to come up higher into the mount and be there and I will give you tables of stones and a, a law and commandment which I will I have written that you may teach them. Now the first time the commandments was God wrote them. That was the first time. You know Moses threw them down and all of that and he had to write them over. Write them over. I know what I said. Verse 13. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua or Joshua however you want to whatever school you went to and Moses went up into the mount of God did you hear that all right let's go to the next golden nugget Ephesians Ephesians chapter 2 Ephesians chapter Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us Did you hear that? Even when we were dead in sin were is past tense even when we were dead in sin, has quickened us together with Christ. Quickened means made alive in Christ. Made alive in Christ. Did you hear that? By grace, you are saved. How are you saved? You are saved by grace. God grace. Not your grace. You ain't got none. By grace are you saved. Did you get that? Then dropping down to verse 6. And has raised us up together. Did you hear that? And made us seat set. Made us sit set together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You are here right now and you are sitting in heavenly places in. Did you say that word in? In Christ Jesus. Get some water. Some Kool-Aid. And meditate on that. You are in heaven right now. Heavenly places right now. In Christ Jesus. God is everywhere. You is in Christ Jesus right now in heavenly places. No, not when you die. No, right now. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know it. They don't teach you that. I am. I'm teaching it now. I'm taking you out peanut butter and jelly. Look at that verse of scripture and don't try to read past it so fast. I know what I said. And I know what I what, what that scripture mean too. I say, sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's what I said. Now, verse seven. That in the age to come, he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace, of his wall, of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Somebody need to, man, my Lord, shout about it. Then you can go over to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 through 20. Get some foundational, which is all doctrine must be built on. Did you hear what I just said? I'm throwing some steak out there. I say I'm throwing some steak out there.
And then back up at verse 6, if you wanted to, you could go to Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 5. If you wanted to. Where it say, and has raised us up together and made us sit in the uh, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You can go to Romans chapter 6, verse 3 to 5 on that one. Let me go. Got another one. Let's go to Colossians. Let me go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, starting at the 9th verse and stop at the 13th. Okay? Let's Colossians chapter 1, let's go to verse 9 and stop at 13. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Man should always pray and say it's not. And to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. That you might be filled. Did you hear that? That you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Did you get that? In all wisdom. We talking about spiritual wisdom now. We ain't talking about no man stuff. In all wisdom, and, I'm not finished, and spiritual understanding. That's a loss of stake right there in verse 9. Did you hear me? I say that's a loss of stake in verse 9. That's why I don't try to eat all of it in one, one, one setting. You at uh, 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 the Golden Corral. Don't try to eat all of it. Don't try to eat all of it. You at a buffet. You at a buffet. You at a spiritual buffet. I got you at a spiritual buffet. And don't be trying to eat it all at one setting. Verse 10. That you might walk word wordly of the Lord unto all pleasing. You want to please the Lord, don't you? Being fruitful in every good work. In some good work. Three-fourths of some good work. No, it's say every good work. And increasing. That means you are growing. Am I right about it? It's say increasing in the knowledge of God. You increasing in the knowledge of God, people. You increasing when you get in these golden nuggets, people. You increasing, people, in the golden nuggets. You increasing. You are growing leaps and bounds. Like a 747. I hope you listening to me today. I hope somebody, somebody, is anybody listening? Look at verse 11. Strengthening with all might. Strengthening with what? Some might? One half of might? No, it didn't say that. Strengthening with all might. You, I got you in a whole bunch of state. All that stuff you like to eat. From verse 9 to 13. This heavy duty, people. You don't hear me. According to his what? According to his what? According to his glorious power. According to his glorious power. According to his glorious power, people. According to his glorious power. I know why I'm saying this. I know why I'm saying this over and over. I want you to get it. According to his glory. Not just power. According to his glorious power. Unto all patient. Not some patient. Unto all patient. And 
long suffering not short suffering long suffering with joy finesse not just joy joy finesse look at 12 now giving thanks giving thanks to who giving thanks unto the father you should do that constantly you giving thanks to the Father which has made us meet. He qualified you. Say what? I say he qualified you. you. He qualified you. You didn't qualify you. He qualified you. You didn't know that, did you? Well, you know it now. Which has made us meet. He qualified to be partakers of the inheritance listen to this to be partakers of the inheritance of the inheritance of what to be partakers of the inheritance to be partakers of the inheritance of what of the saints in light you can't be no saint and a sinner too at the same time. A sinner is one that practices sin. A saint is a believer, a child of God. Am I right about that? Somebody needs to shout about it and learn the difference. These people keep teaching you all this yang yang. We need to go to school or go somewhere. Or go to the right school. Let me correct that. They need to go to the right school. You want to know what the right school is? The school of the Holy Ghost. And some of you say Holy Spirit. They the same. Let me go a little further. Let me go a little further. Got me excited over here. Somebody need to know the truth. And the truth will make you free. It won't set you free. It'll make you free. The truth that you know. Say, well, I tell you the truth that you know. Because a whole people, a whole bunch of people talking about the truth. What truth? The truth that you know. And how do you get the truth? By the Holy Spirit. And how do you do that? By getting in His Word. Oh, don't mess with me. Verse 13. Who has delivered us? Say what? Who has delivered us? Has. He has delivered you. You no more bound by that witchcraft, voodoo, hoodoo, and all that other bull crap that they trying to throw on you. They can't. Because of the blood. What blood? Jesus. You, you can't mess with me. Like like Reverend I used to say, they can talk junk all they want about the old man, but he knew something. I can't lose. You heard me. With the stuff I use. And he wasn't lying. What stuff? The scripture. Golden nuggets, if you will. Try to mess with me and see what's going to happen. If it was good for Abraham, you couldn't mess with Abraham. I know you can't mess with me. I'm of a, a better promises. New Testament. You better know it. Verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? He has delivered me from the power of darkness. I'm part of the body. The feet can't say to the hand or to the head, I have no need of thee. Christ is the head. And if you the feet, everything is under your feet. Say nothing on your feet. You better believe it. As long as you part of the head, you don't hear me. Now, if you get away from the head, that's a different story. 
but I ain't going nowhere. I don't know about you. And has translated us. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? I am translated into the kingdom of Christ, his dear son. You better shout about it, somebody. Hallelujah! Boy, I done gave you so much steak today. You better get some water, Kool-Aid, and something to drink. And chew on it. Had enough to chew on for a whole three, three or four or five years. Take that to the bank, sookie, sookie. And work with it. Do your ministry. Like I say, this came in my heart again. The Holy Spirit brought it back to me. You better do those things that God had been putting on your heart. Slowly. Start back doing what God told you to do. Because he told me again. Once again, I'm telling you one more time. I don't care if it's right a book. You write two, two sentences. Or one word. He told me. Write one word down. I don't care if you can't find the book. I don't care if you can't find the paper. Find a, a piece of paper. Find a paper. Find a sheet. Find something. Write one word down. I did write one word down. If you write one word down, finances shall flow. I got something to speak into your life. You think I'm playing. I ain't playing though. Because I know what he told me. I'm saying to you today, if you're supposed to sing a song, sing it to this week. Sing it. You ain't got, sing it. Get that guitar play it. Sing it. You probably been writing a book? Write a word. I dare you to write one word. I dare you to write one word. Minister to somebody. Don't be half-stepping. Don't be telling what you think. Getting them golden nuggets and teach them. Don't be telling what you think. Tell them the word. Speak the word only. Don't tell them what you think. Don't tell them... If your church don't teach the word, you teach the word. I say you teach the word. I say you teach the word. Speak the word only. Do you hear me? Speak the word only. God is ready for you to speak the word only. No, you ain't wait, waiting on God. God is waiting on you. He's been blessing you. You ain't on this earth playing j just for fun. The thief is mad at you. The thief coming not but to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. Period. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you have saved, healed, and set free, delivered brought in provision you have blessed your people money is on its way as your prophet is speaking right now unexpected money is on its way blessing is on its way people are giving to people unexpectedly all kind of miracles is happening this week even as I speak right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I believe that you sent Jesus on this earth to save sinners. Hallelujah. I believe in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, 10, and 13. I believe that uh, Jesus died, and on the third day he rose from the dead. And if we believe that we have everlasting life, and we have eternal life. And if we tell somebody 
We are born again, born again, born again. I believe in Acts 2.38. I believe in Acts chapter 19, verse 1 through 7. And we want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the prayer language, the gifts. We ask God the Father in Jesus' name and he'll give it to us. The nine fruits of the Spirit walk in them. Whatever gifts we desire, we ask the Father in Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you for giving us a word, a word, a word, a word, once again, from on high. And we thank you, Lord God, to the next time. Shalom, 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 amen.